I'm going to tell you who my top 10 Wisconsin Badgers football players are heading into spring. We did this last year. We're doing it again this year. Let's talk about it on Wisconsin. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to Locked On Badgers, your team every single day. Um, really do appreciate everybody tuning in. I'm your host, Ryan Herrings, as always. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. And I want to say thank you so, so much for everybody tuning in. If you're on the pod, if you're on YouTube, if you're watching, wherever you're getting it, thank you. Um, for the bottom of my heart, it's incredibly humbling to have anybody kind of tune into this and just continue the journey. So I appreciate it. All right, let's talk a ton of basketball talk recently. Uh, a lot more basketball talk coming up. But I wanted to shift gears a little bit, get some football talk in here. Let's talk about... And I did this last year, uh, which I enjoyed. We did a top 15 last year, uh, Badgers football players heading into spring. We're going to do a top 10 this year with some honorable mentions. So I'm going to go reverse order, 10 to 1, who I think are the best players on the team heading into spring. Not the most important, right? Because quarterback obviously has a, has a higher degree of importance than other spots. you know. So this is just the 10 players that I think are the best. And as always... This is just my list. It doesn't necessarily make it the right list. So I would love to get your take on this, your opinions on this, um, to see where you're at. Let me know who you think I'm too high on, who I'm too low on, who I'm forgetting about. Um, just for reference, because I want to always kind of be honest with you all. Last year, my top five heading into spring, heading into the season was Alexander Smith at five, Joe Tittman at four, Benton at three, Herbie at two, Allen at one. I think that's I think I think I did pretty good there. Now, some of those are kind of no-brainers, right? Benton was going to be on any list you did, Herbig, Allen. Uh, but I kind of went on a limb a little bit on Alexander Smith, uh, Joe Titman a little bit to have him that high. I think those worked really well. If I'm looking at my top 10, uh, last year heading into the, the practice, I had uh, Daryl Peterson, Vuj, Jay Shaw, Jack Nelson, DK. Um, overall, most of those guys lived up to what I thought they would be, so... All right, let's get into this year's list, this year's top 10. We're going in reverse order, starting at 10, going all the way down to one again. Let me know where you think uh, you're – maybe maybe I'm too high on somebody, too low on somebody. All right, let's start on my honorable mentions. I got three honorable mentions. First one is Daryl Peterson, outside linebacker. You know, he was a – Peterson was, was a really big recruit coming out of high school, just a, a terror on the edge in high school. And I think we expected – Maybe maybe I expected a little more a little earlier from him, but physically he's really good. Uh, I think this could be the year where that breakout happens. They need him, right? Quite frankly, you need an outside linebacker. You need a couple to step up in the absence of Nick Herbig and those 11 sacks. I think it's 11 that he had this year. I can't remember off the top of my head. But you need somebody to fill that void. I think Peterson is the most obvious choice for that. I think he physically he profiles there a little bit better than a Caden Johnson. He's been far healthier than an Aaron Witt. Uh, TJ Bowlers, I think, is a different type of body type. I think Peterson is going to be the guy, the freshman, or he got on the field right away as a freshman. The coaching staff liked him. Uh, this new coaching staff, I think, is going to like or be able to use that physical presence a little bit. So I think Peterson, I'm projecting a little bit, he's got to be that guy this year. And I think he has all the physical tools to be maybe the next in that line of outside linebackers at Wisconsin. We just haven't seen it consistently enough. So Peterson is one of my honorable mentions. Uh, DK is on my honorable mentions list. I had DK higher in last year's group, but I, I think, and it, this is not reflective of him. We just brought in some receivers and I, I have some players that I think maybe have a little higher ceiling at that spot that have jumped him. But DK was super solid last year in an offense that did receivers no favors, right? Uh, 47 receptions, 680 yards, 14 um, yards per catch. Really solid, steady possession receiver that has enough speed to break away. We saw him take an underneath crossing route to a touchdown last year. We've seen him get deep against Northwestern. He's a really solid player. I think this offense is going to do him a lot more favors, but there's a lot more competition at receiver. So I have Team Ray on the honorable mention line. And my last honorable mention is Hunter Wohler. Those are my three honorable mention players. Listen, Wohler, it, he just hasn't been able to consistently stay healthy enough to make the impact that we all really thought he would make at Wisconsin. I don't think anybody doubts the physical tools. I don't think anybody really doubts the IQ or the intangibles. People have raved about his work ethic. He has to stay healthy. He's had a couple years now where he's been nicked up a little bit. I think he played six games last year. It's not his fault. 
I mean, there's nothing you, you can do about certain injuries, but you got to stay healthy and show it. Uh, I think he's an odds on favorite with Kamoe Latou to be a starting safety this year, although there is quite a bit of depth at that position now. Um, but he has to show it. I think this is the year for him. Certainly, this new defense or this new defensive scheme coming over with Mike Tressel. They they have developed defensive backs in the past. I, I imagine that's going to be good for Hunter Wohler, but we have to see it. If this is one of the guys, by the way, if Hunter Wohler puts it all together this year, this is a guy who could skyrocket up this list, right? He would go from honorable mention to top five. That's the type of, I think, physical tools he has, but he has to show it. I think it goes without mention, by the way, that doing a list like this can look really dumb at the end of the year, but that's I'm okay with that, right? We're It's okay to put thought into something and be wrong. So uh, those are my three honorable mentions. Let's get into a few more, then I'll take a quick break. At number 10 this year, I have Skylar Bell. I have Skylar Bell kind of flip-flopping with Chim Ray. Chim Ray was on my list last year. Now he's an honorable mention. Um, last year I had Skylar Bell as an honorable mention. Now I have him at 10. The difference is Sky, Skylar's a little younger. I think he's a little more explosive. Averaged uh, slightly better yards per catch. Had five touchdowns last year on less opportunities than Chim Ray. I think this offense is going to be great for him. He's really, really physically yoked up. I mean, this is a, a very, very physical athletic receiver who is now it will, will have three years in, in a college football program. We'll be going into a system that's going to be much, much better for receivers. Um, I expect him to potentially lead the team in receptions this year or lead the team in or be in the top two or three in receptions, yards, touchdowns, and have a great year as a number two ish receiver for this, this Phil Longo offense. So I've got uh Skylar bell at number 10 and number nine. I got Muma non Majumeta. Nanjameta, sorry. Um, I had him as an honorable mention last year. Muma led the team in tackles this year, 95 tackles, led the team by quite a bit, had 11 and a half tackles for loss. That was second to Nick Herbig. So very productive inside linebacker. I, I Rajiv likes him a lot, likes him a lot. And I think he is a, a really physical player, played better in the second half of last year. I still kind of wonder athletically how he's going to play in space, how he holds up in space against some of the more athletic teams that we have to play against. But very productive um, coming in. He's another guy who is making up for time. He lost some time early in his career with injuries. So I got Muma at nine. I expect a really good year from him this year. I don't know how much higher the ceiling is, but certainly Wisconsin will welcome back any linebacker that has 95 total tackles and 11 and a half for loss. And he's, he's a big time piece of the defense when you're playing running teams, physical teams, when you're playing in Iowa, when Michigan's trying to get their running game going, when Minnesota's trying to run between the tackles, Muma is a huge linchpin. Uh, and will be next year in helping to shut that those type of offenses down. So I've got Muma at nine. Uh, let me hit up Jake Renfro, who I got at eight. Renfro, the Cincinnati transfer. And this one's kind of a, um, this one's kind of a, a wild card, right? It's kind of a, a, a question mark. So we haven't seen him miss last year with an injury. The last time he really played, he was fantastic. 2021, um, all eight ACC center, first team, one of the best offensive linemen in that league. Uh, Dane Brugler, who does an NFL, who does a draft report, had him as the eighth best interior offensive line prospect for the draft. Good size for an inside offensive lineman. You know, I talked to Brady Collins uh, specifically about Renfro because Brady Collins was with Renfro in Cincinnati, the new strength and conditioning uh, director. And he said, you know, this kid is built for the Big Ten. All right. That's what he said in our interview on the show. It's, and you can go back to, and I encourage you to go back and watch it. He said, this dude is built for this league and just really talked very highly about him, raved about him. If he's healthy, this is a guy who who could also bump up this list. But we just we we haven't seen him. We didn't see him last year. We haven't seen him in in the Big Ten. So I think we're being a little conservative with this ranking. But he has the talent and tenacity to probably bump up this a few spots. Um, really big, really really big transfer get for Wisconsin this offseason. I think he's your starting center. I think they got him to be the starting center, and that's been the assumption from basically everybody that we've talked to. So. Um, that's, that's my honorable mention and my first couple, again, those honorable mentions, you know, it's a receiver team or DK who is really good, a uh, really solid player, Hunter Wooler, who I think just needs to get healthy, right. Which are not, or yeah, Hunter Wooler who just needs to stay healthy and be consistent. And I think he has star potential. And then, um, Daryl Peterson, who has a lot of physical tools. This is the year to put it together. And then at 10, nine and eight, we got Skylar Bell, who I think is prime for a big year. Uh, Muma, who is the, the leading production guy coming back on the defense, and Jake Renfro, who I think is potentially a star they got in the transfer portal. Coming up next, we're going to talk about who uh, Hunter Wooler's running mate 
And uh, a couple more offensive linemen that I'm really high on coming up next on Lockdown Badgers in our top uh, player rankings for the season. But first, we're going to talk about our friends of the show over at FanDuel, um, America's number one sports book. And it is uh, our favorite sports book as well. FanDuel, friends of the show, the NBA season winding down, playoffs coming up. And uh, this is the best time to sign up if you haven't signed up to FanDuel. You get the no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back. If your first bet doesn't win, just download the FanDuel app. It's safe, secure, super easy to use. You can bet on everything from money line, point scores, three pointers drained, combine it all into same game parlays. Plus, you can do player points, rebounds, assists, whatever you want to bet on. FanDuel has you covered. And I've talked about some of my futures bets. You can bet on who you think is going to make the NBA Finals. Is it going to be Phoenix versus Milwaukee, Denver versus Boston, right? You can take um, Phoenix to win. The Western Conference plus 260, which I actually have taken. So that's out there for you. Or if you think Golden State, this is another sneak you want to kind of like with how well Golden State has been playing. Steph Curry is getting back healthy, plus 600 to win the Western Conference. I don't hate that at all for Golden State. That's something I would look at. So don't miss your chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets back when you go to fanduel.com slash locked on. That's fanduel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with fanduel, the official sportsbook partner of the NBA. All right, let's keep going here. Um, a bunch more I want to get into. Plus, I have a bunch of your comments that I want to take. But let's finish off our top 10 list of Badgers this year. And again, let me know where your, your top 10 is. I'm very curious to get everybody's reaction to this. And then we'll do a whole show just on your top 10s. Maybe we'll even average them out. That might be a fun exercise to see where the fan base is at. So here we go. Let's keep going. We got 10, 9, 8. At 7, I have Tanner Bordellini. And I think... You know, we talked to Renfro, so back-to-back offense alignment on this list. Renfro coming over moves Bordellini into a spot that I think he's better at, offensive guard. Only gave up one sack last season, according to Pro Football Focus. Obviously a veteran, a guy who's been through a lot of battles for Wisconsin, somebody who knows what needs to be done in the Big Ten. Versatile player, which I think bumps up his value a little bit. This is a guy who really can slide just about anywhere on the offensive line, right? You you can be comfortable with, with Bordeaux anywhere you want on the offensive line and that's an incredibly valuable chess piece to be able to move around but he's also not just he's not a guy who's just kind of met everywhere but you can put him there he's also a really good guard so one of the keys to the offensive line this year one of the keys to the offense I think the offense line is going to be better it's going to be better because of guys like Renfro and Bordellini so I got Bordellini at seven at six I got Kamoila too I love this dude first of all uh, this is another guy that I've talked with Brady Collins about just a physical dude. I I can't wait to see him this upcoming season after going through um, a really demanding off season strength conditioning program. He, he showed up with a plum last year, right? If you remember safety was a spot, especially with Travion Blaylock getting hurt, uh, Hunter Waller having some injury issues. Safety was kind of a a spot where we were a little concerned. Latou showed up and was just a baller, you know, uh, 52, 55 total tackles, two picks. He was fifth on the team in tackles last year. I think he defended three passes, really physical presence, but he's also has the speed to play some deep coverage ability. He can come up in the line of scrimmage and pop people. He's a real player, a very good athlete. When he came over originally, uh, we talked to John Garcia about him and he, John Garcia just raved about the physicality, uh, how physical this player was, you know, how he played against USC in the PAC 12 and, just, you know, was all over the field. And then we saw that at Wisconsin. This is a, a big time player in the secondary that they picked up through the transfer portal. Credit to the previous staff for it. Um, he's 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 a borderline star in the secondary. I love me some Kamoila too. Can't wait to see him in year two in Madison. So that's why I have a number six. Uh, number five, I got Jack Nelson. So he was a, a, a Big Ten honorable mention last year. And just a guy who... I think he'd be a little further along if he wasn't kind of pigeonholed into playing guard his first year. I think he's a natural left tackle. He's got the height and reach that really very few college players with his his feet and his movement skills have. He's in the 97th percentile when you start looking at height and reach for offensive tackle prospects at the NFL level. So he really checks those boxes of being able to extend his arms, keep people at bay. I think he needs to get a little more consistent right um a little probably a little stronger i think both those things are going to happen this off season but just a, a player who's going into you know he's played two full seasons as a starter he's played a lot of football i think left tackle is his natural spot i think there's a very real chance this might be his last year in madison um so i expect him to put a lot on tape and, and kind of put it together and you know i don't think he's the elite 
left tackle that we've seen at times at Wisconsin. But I think he's going to have a very good year and kind of anchor that left tackle spot. Only give up two sacks last year, according to Pro Football Focus. Um, and again, he's just got the the physical traits that not a lot of left tackles have. And if you follow any practice reports from the last couple of years, he's just a mean, nasty, tenacious guy that gets in fights. And that's kind of what you want in an offensive lineman, right? You don't want him to be a punk in the locker room, which I, I haven't heard anything about that. But you want him to be nasty between the lines. And he does that with the combination of that 6-7 frame with really long reach. I think he's going to have a very good year. So I got Nelson at five. Um, at number four, I got Bryson Green, the Oklahoma State guy coming in. I got him as the number one receiver this year. I think he's going to lead the team in, in receiving uh, yards and receptions. Excuse me. And he's a guy, you go back and look at Oklahoma State, just a big play waiting to happen. Average 16 yards per, uh, per catch, five touchdowns, really physical, developed receiver, can break tackles in the open field. He gives you some of that physicality, um, the ability to, you know, Phil Longo talks about running to space, you know, creating explosive plays. Bryson Green can do that. Also really good hands, good red zone threat. Uh, had 36 catches last year and five touchdowns. That's a that's a really strong ratio of catch to touchdowns. So I got him at number four. I think he's going to be receiver number one this year. Um, I don't think there's going to be a huge gap between him and Skylar Bell if he's number two. Like I think there's going to be a bunch of receivers this year that that contribute, and two or three of them that get you know twenty plus catches, thirty plus catch, catches. I think that's realistic. Thirty plus is actually probably where I'm at on that. Um, but I think Green's going to lead that charge. I think it was a tremendous pickup in the offseason to give them a ready-made receiver who can step in right away and be you know, one of Mordecai's go-to targets. So I've got Green at number four. And number three, I've got Alexander Smith. And I had him at five on last year's list. I think he's a potential NFL draftable cornerback. I think he is a potential board. Lockdown corner is such a unique and rare thing. It's like saying a number one starter in baseball, right? Like, Every team has an opening day starter. Not everybody has an ace. So it, it's kind of a, a term that gets thrown around a, a little bit. I think Alexander Smith can be as close to a lockdown corner as we've had since Nick Nelson, right, since that type of player. Uh, physically, he's big. He's really fast. We talked to Brady Collins. Brady Collins mentioned that Alexander Smith has a bit of a Kobe mentality to him, which anytime you hear that attached to an athlete from a mindset standpoint, you absolutely love uh, coming off an injury last year, he only played a bit. And you saw that defense. I think Purdue was the first game he was back. That defense was night and day different as soon as he got back in that Purdue game. He is a tremendous athlete, a lot of experience. I cannot wait to see him in the secondary this year with Latou, with Wohler, with some of the new guys that are coming in. I think uh, Alexander Smith may be the star of the defense. So I'm excited to see it. Can't wait to watch. I got him at number three. I had him at number five on last year's list. All right, and number two, let's wrap this up. I got Tanner Mordecai. Now, I was talking to Justin a little bit about this. Justin brought the point that Tanner's the most important guy in offense. I agree with that, but from just a talent standpoint, I got him at number two. Again, this is a quarterback coming off a, a 33, 3,500 yard, 33 touchdown, 3,500 yard season. And the year before that, he threw 39 touchdowns. So a guy who is you know averaging 36, 37 touchdown passes the last two years, and he's coming. Now, people will say, well, pass happy offense sure that's what we're gonna have this year too <laughs> like you know that's that's what we're gonna do this year as well and then they're gonna say well bad conference yeah for sure he also wasn't handing off to Braylon Allen he didn't have this offensive line and he's not gonna have you know four receivers that are really good uh, he didn't have that at SMU right so don't don't get too caught up in the people who brush off the production because of bad competition or a uh, pass happy offense you still need to be a good quarterback to put up those numbers. And yes, his competition gets harder, but his, so does his, his surrounding talent gets better as well when he comes to Madison. So it's not like he's bringing his SMU team to him to Madison to play the Big Ten. No, he's going to have Keontes Lewis, CJ Williams, Cheem Ray, Skyler, Green, uh, Braylon Allen, a very veteran offensive line. Like everything is better around him as well. So I think he's going to have a monster year. I think he's, he's the real deal. I got him at number two. Um, and number one, my reigning number one, I got Braylon Allen. I think people are, are really quick to forget. Uh, like this was by Braylon Allen and by legendary Wisconsin, you know, kind of status. This That wasn't a great running back year last year from him. He still averaged five and a half per carry and 1,200 yards on a broken offense. Like he's a, he's a stud. 
He's an absolute stud. And now he's going to be running into boxes that aren't crammed full of 260 pound linebackers. I think he's poised for a monster year. And remember his freshman year, he averaged six plus yards per carry. And, and then he was just learning the position, right? Last year, he dealt with a broken offense. Nobody faced more eight or nine man boxes, except for like the, some army and air force receivers who basically are running the triple option. He had a, a running backs coach who wasn't a running back that like Al Johnson was a bad hire at running backs coach. I can't wait to see Braylon this year. I think he's the most talented player right now going into spring. Um, yeah. So let me know uh, with your list. Let me know what you guys think of it. If you guys would have someone else on this list, if I should have somebody higher or lower, I would love to do it. We'll do a whole nother episode on your reactions to it. Uh, it'll be a lot of fun to chop it up and get kind of the pulse of it where everybody's at with it. All right, coming up, a bunch of your comments um, stemming from the basketball game, including is Chucky Hepburn at his best position, uh, biggest needs in the portal, why Greg Gard needs to show more emotion, a lot of stuff I want to get to. Some of which I agree with and some of which I disagree with from your comments. We're going to talk about that next on Lockdown Badgers. But first, today's show is brought to you by our good friends, as always, over by Bill Bar. Uh, if you're looking for a delicious treat, uh, but you don't want all the fat and calories, then you got to try Bill Bar. Listen, um, a lot of our goals are to be a little healthier, eat a little healthier. Uh, Bill Bar helps me on that journey, legitimately helps me. And there are a lot of things out there, a lot of products out there that we try and it works for a little bit or it's a fad. Like Bill Bar really does help. It's healthy protein. It tastes good. You're not fighting it while you're eating it. Like there's other, I won't say any names. There's other protein bars out there that they taste healthy, if you know what I mean. And that's not a good thing. Bill Bar tastes delicious and it's healthy. That's the difference. I don't know how they do it, but it's packed in protein. Very little, uh, very little sugar, 100% real chocolate. And the flavors, again, I've talked to you, churro is my favorite, but a lot of people like the peanut butter brownie. There's a coconut almond. They have a bunch of stuff. I don't know how they do it, but it's incredible. Go, and the best part is you don't have to go online for the boxes anymore. They're in Walmart. Go to the pharmacy section, get your four-bar box. Um, go to Sam's Club, get your 13-bar variety box. You will thank me later, Built Bar. All right, let's keep this going. I want to really quickly... Because I, I want to get into some of your comments, but I want to really quickly run through a couple players who I think, because I just did my top 10, right, with a couple honorable mention. I want to highlight a couple players who I think could potentially jump into that list as well. So I have Clay Cundiff, uh, Avion Jones, Aaron Witt, and CJ Williams. I want to focus on those four. CJ Williams physically is just such a unique player to hit Madison. If he puts it together this year in this offense, he could leapfrog some dudes and be one of the best players on this team next year, or even this year. Avion Jones, I think there's an opening next to Alexander Smith, right? Um, there are bodies there, but nobody established. I think Avion Jones steps up this year, and physically he has a lot of tools. He could be one of the best cornerbacks on the team this year if he puts it all together. Clay Cundiff just needs to stay healthy. Now, I don't know if he has a ceiling to jump into that top 10, but definitely kind of into that area right behind it, into that honorable mention spot. He just needs to stay healthy. And then um, Aaron Witt. I talk, again, talk about staying healthy, but when he's right, you just there's not a lot of six five guys with his his wingspan and his physical frame outside linebacker. So those are some guys I thought of. They didn't make my list, but I thought if things click right, health situation, um, if they all click together, I think all those dudes could step up big this year and, and really force their way onto a top ten type list. All right, let's get into some questions, comments. I got a bunch of them here. Again, I always try to get to your comments, put them on the show, because I, I think the insight is great. I think we get smarter by having discussions together and not just one person dominating a microphone. So let's get the community in here. This is from Jim Parks. Guard is very, very low energy. These comments come from um, the live show we did and from the YouTube channel. So that's where they come from. Jim, thank you for jumping in. Uh, guard, so I don't know... Every coach has their own style, right? Like Fran is very, very high energy, but he's a lunatic and you'd never want him around Madison, right? So I'm okay with, I, I here's the thing. I wish guard would get on refs a little bit more, right? There was a story about how few technicals he's gotten. And I'm like, God, I don't know if that's a good thing, right? I think you want a couple more techs, but you don't have to be Bo Ryan either, where every call is the, the you know, the splitting the atom of nuclear anger. You know, you don't have to be that. Uh, I think just at this point, guard is who he is, and you don't want him to try to be someone he's not because players will see right through that BS. So I think when they're winning, it's fine. When they're losing, it's a big deal. The, this, this one doesn't bother me a ton, Jim, but I, I do appreciate it. Uh, Kefo says, it all went south when they blew a 17-point lead to Nebraska and lost. 
as much as people want to hate on guard, he isn't missing countless foul tries or missing easy layups. Yeah, like I think this gets into that that weird circular spot where we're trying to assign the blame and the blame really should go everywhere, right? It's like if you have a pot of water and you just throw the blame cup in there, the, the blame cup spreads out and it just diffuses into the water, right? And I don't know if that analogy works, but my point is the blame is everywhere, right? Because, yeah, I, I agree with you, Akefo, and thank you for the comment. Longtime listener and, and follower and commenter of the show, which I really appreciate. The players need to play better. Like, there was there was a point in that game where Stephen Crow, if we're just talking the um, the Ohio State Big Ten Tournament game, where he post-moved, the Ohio State player flopped. Crow had a three-foot bunny with nobody on him, and he, he short-rimmed it. That's not on great guard, right? For for gosh sake, you're a seven footer with nobody around you. You need to bring the backboard down on top of somebody's head, Stephen Crowell. However, it does. You do then get into the cycle of if the players aren't playing well enough, they're not finishing. Who's developing those players? Who's recruiting those athletes? And that's again where you just get in this weird circular thing of, yeah, the players blew a lot of opportunities. They need to play better, but. Maybe that's because they're not good enough because the guy developing them isn't developing enough. Um, so the blame goes everywhere. And I just – I have a hard time putting it all on one side or the other. Um, Daniel says, uh, bad entertainment last night, badly coached. Next year you keep saying – and by you, I think he's referring to me. I keep saying the portal recruiting will put us back in the saddle. I don't know why a portal guy worth a crap. And I had to cut it off because I can only fit so many characters in these comments. But – uh, Daniel saying, I don't know why a portal guy worth a crap would ever come to play here. Um, then he went on to say he's not as enthralled with Gus Yaldon as maybe I am because he, he doesn't have a big vertical. He's not an athletic big. So let me – two really quick things. Portal guys want to go somewhere where they can play a lot and play at a big stage and get NIL money. Wisconsin can check all those boxes. They, they really can. Now, guards still need to go out and do it, but Wisconsin has opportunity. They need to get better and more athletic. Uh, it's going to be in the Big Ten, and Wisconsin's Varsity Collective has stepped up recently. So I don't think it's as hard of a sell as people tend to think it is. Guard has to go out and make it happen, though, and that's on him. Um, the other part with Gus Yaldon, he's not the most athletic guy. If that's the, the recruit you're looking for, Gus isn't going to be for you. But there's a lot of dudes who jump out of the gym who are garbage players. So I, I like Gus a lot. I've said it I've said it for a long time. I said it before he committed. I said it when people thought he was heading to Louisville or, for, or I think it's – Louisville is somewhere else where people were like, oh, he's going there. And I was like, man, that's a big loss. I would have loved Gus on this team. So it's not a Johnny come lately take for me. I've been high on that for a long time. Uh, I think he's going to help a lot next year. I think people are going to be excited about it. Let's go to Don't Badger Me. Again, appreciate the comments, man. You're a lot on a lot of our shows too. Uh, 2024 commit from Con or Nick would certainly boost our spirits right now. Heaven knows we could use some good news. You know, Con Knipple, uh, Nick Janowski. Khan, by the way, if we're talking Khan Knippel, the, the in-state small forward, just got his fifth star on uh, Rivals. Like, he's a legitimate top 20, top 30 type player in the country right now. I think he is a monster. I have no idea if we get him. Uh, it's going to be a battle. Like, we talked about it. We talked about Khan a couple shows. It's Wisconsin. It's Virginia. Uh, potentially other schools getting into that mix. I think we end up with Khan. That's my gut. Talking to Jason Jordan from Sports Illustrated, that's kind of the feel he had, I thought, reading between the lines. But that's a battle. He, it's a, it's almost a must-get, too, because there's not a lot of other elite talent that Wisconsin is in on right now in the 24 class. Uh, Janowski would be great as well. It just doesn't feel like guard is prioritizing him as much. Colby McCole says, I'd give this team a D plus. They finished about in line with preseason expectations, but the results are what they are. Sad thing is this team probably overachieved uh, record-wise a little bit. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know. I think D-plus is totally fair. I went C-minus. Um, I don't know if they overachieved record-wise, though. Like, they, they, they stern, this record could have swung a couple different directions. And quite frankly, even, even though we've talked about close games are kind of um, luck driven to some degree and putting yourself in those spots is putting yourself in the spot to have heartbreaking losses. Some losses still felt a little more heartbreaking than, than they should be. Right. Like, I don't know. I, I felt like this team achieved about what they should. Yeah, I guess is where I'm at. Uh, Kyle F said, UW basketball slipped into severe mediocrity. Glory years of Bo Ryan are long gone. Guard can't recruit the way Ryan did championship level uh, basketball under Ryan has turned into mediocrity under gray guard. Well, I would start by saying nobody's going to be Bo Ryan, right? So if if that's the consistent level that people want, I know people 
will say, well, you have to have standards, live up to that expectation. But Ryan's a Hall of Fame coach. Those, those dudes are unicorns. They're hard to find. And what he did is incredibly amazing. So I, I just – I don't think we've slipped into severe mediocrity. I think this year we were severely mediocre. Last year we weren't. So when you're saying slipped into to mediocrity, and this is just my opinion on this, it has to be more than a couple of years to say that we've slipped into that level. So that's where I'm at. But Kyle, man, I appreciate the comments as always. Uh, Relic X says, can't expect to win while running the offense through Crowell. Guard doesn't offer any good ideas anymore. I think Guard's limited by what he has on the chessboard. And I agree. I don't think Crowell can be the number one option. Um, he doesn't generate enough easy post looks. A lot of them are contested hook shots, contest. You know, he, he gets a couple, but he's not so good on the block that you want to run your offense truly through him. But it's just where else does guard turn right now with this roster? And that's where, again, this is an offseason problem. You weren't going to fix it this year. So we got to see what happens next year and next offseason. I agree. I don't think Crow can be the number one option on a really good team offensively. I don't think he has the footwork or the skill or the bounce. Uh, inside on the post so i agree with you there um john burns says i love Rajiv's optimism but i'm betting with justin so john agreeing with justin here we all love Rajiv op- Rajiv's optimism though uh rio c says ryan refuses to answer my question and i've asked him on every platform shaking my head rio i i'm not i'm not um dismissing whatever you're trying to say i promise you i have no idea what your question was so let me know. Um, send me a DM or something because I just missed it. I have no idea what your question was. Um, let me know. Send me something and I'll answer it. I, I really wanted to get this up here just to let you know I'm not trying to um, not not respond to you. I don't know what the question was. Let's keep going. Uh, Kansas Pike, this is 100% below the rim team with virtually no athleticism. It is it is a team that needs an athletic upgrade, Kansas. And we've talked about it on the show. I don't know if there's one plus athlete on the team right now. Like – who who's the most athletic guy on this Badgers basketball team right now? I think Gus. I mean, I mean John Blackwell coming in next year is a plus athlete potentially. I mean that's that's a problem, right? You have to have more athletes on the team. I think Greg Gard has talked about that. He needs to address it this offseason. That's an incredibly fair comment, Kansas. Commandant Clink says I like Chucky, just not as a starting point guard. He could play point guard for a few minutes if we had a true point guard that had to spell him. So I've I've talked about this on the show i talked about it early in the season how i would like to play hepper a little bit more off ball because i think he's a really good spot up shoot he's a really good spot shooter not i think he is the numbers and the math and the, the statistics say he is he's a really good off ball shooter i like him as a secondary playmaker where if you have action you can swing it to him he can attack a closeout or kind of a secondary pick and roll where he can he can make some action after that off a scramble i just the problem is i don't think you can play him off guard for for a long time because you don't uh, maybe i don't know it's interesting uh you would need a bigger point guard then right because you just can't have two short guards for long periods of the of, of the game in my opinion but we'll see what happens in the offseason now i don't think given that chucky's been a starting point guard for two seasons and really done a pretty solid job by the way i don't think there's any chance that it happens but i am interested in the thought experiment of him being more of a two guard if you had a bigger point guard next to him all right let's keep going here uh last question Tyler Streber, uh, should we be worried that anybody leaves in the portal? Chuck or Asijin? Yes. Listen, I, it, it, this is 2023 modern college basketball. You should always be worried somebody gets poached, in my opinion, right? That's just the world we live in. Now, I think we've seen on the football side that the Wisconsin NIL varsity collective is, is up to par. I don't think that another team is going to come in and necessarily be outbidding Wisconsin. So from that aspect, I think we're probably in a better spot than most programs in the country. But yeah, if if there was a school who came in and you know tried to woo either of these players, a big time school, especially like an Asijin, it I'm sure it's happening. I'm sure people are trying to do that. That's how college sports works right now. I wouldn't be overly worried about it, but don't be shocked by anything, is what I would say. Now, I w- again, I don't think it's gonna happen because what school is gonna offer a Asijin more shots in Wisconsin next year? Like he's going to get a ton of shots for Wisconsin. He got a ton of shots as a true freshman this year. What school is going to let Chucky basically again, run the show at the end of games and be the starting point guard next year. Wisconsin is name another school, Wisconsin's level. That's going to do that. Uh, I mean, I I just don't know if there's schools that are are going to come in and, and rip those players out because I think Wisconsin offers both a pretty good opportunity next year, if that makes sense. All right. Anyway, on Wisconsin, really do appreciate everybody tuning in as always y'all the best. 
Uh, let's keep it going. And like I said, on Wisconsin.